Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Raj Srinam Budripad. I'm board certified in internal medicine. And today's video is all about candida and CFO, which stands for small intestine fungal overgrowth. How many of you have heard of candida before? Well, it stands for candida albicans, which is a type of yeast or fungus. Yeast and fungi are actually everywhere, even on the food that we're eating. For example, a lot of food has microscopic amounts of yeast, like corn, peanuts, cereals. Breads contain brewer's or baker's yeast, and mushrooms are a type of edible fungus. Even fruits, like berries, could have microscopic amounts of fungus. So the truth is, we're all eating fungus all the time. Did you know that Candida albicans is actually a normal commensal organism in our GI tract? Usually it's not a problem unless it overgrows and interferes with the balance of friendly bacteria in our body. Normally there's a balance between bacteria and yeast in our body. And normally the bacteria check fungal overgrowth and prevent the overgrowth of yeast. But if something causes our good bacteria to go down, this can then allow the yeast to overgrow and take over. An overgrowth of yeast causes different symptoms in different parts of the body. In the mouth, it causes thrush, which is a white coating on the tongue. Women can get vaginal yeast infections, which presents with a white discharge, as well as itching, burning, or redness. On the scalp, yeast overgrowth can present as dandruff. Toenail fungus is another symptom of yeast overgrowth. Fungal overgrowth on the skin can cause a itchy, raised, circular rash called ringworm. It can also cause patches of lightening of the skin called hypopigmentation, known as tinea versicolor. When I see any of these symptoms of yeast overgrowth, I think of it as an outward manifestation of an internal problem. Because remember, all disease begins in the gut. So it could be due to an overgrowth of candida in the gut microbiome. GI symptoms of candida overgrowth include abdominal pain, bloating, gas, nausea, irregular bowel habits, rectal itching, as well as bad breath. Systemic symptoms of a candida overgrowth include chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, brain fog, mood symptoms like anxiety or depression, body odor, or a general sense of feeling sick all over. Previously, yeast overgrowth was primarily seen in immunocompromised patients, like those with HIV or AIDS, or those with high blood sugar from uncontrolled diabetes. But nowadays we see yeast overgrowth in people with normal immune systems who are not diabetic, often due to a side effect of antibiotics. Here we have a lady who took antibiotics for a urinary tract infection and three days later has a vaginal yeast infection. This is because the antibiotics not only killed the bad bacteria in the urinary tract, it also killed some of the vaginal lactobacillus, which is a good bacteria that normally inhibits the growth of yeast by lowering the vaginal pH. So unfortunately, this is the downside to broad spectrum antibiotics. They can wipe out some of the good bacteria, tipping the balance in favor of yeast overgrowth. This is why I always advise my patients to take probiotics when taking an antibiotic to protect the balance of the bacteria in the microbiome. On top of the broad spectrum antibiotics, we have another problem, the standard American diet, also known as the SAD diet. Yeast loves sugar, and the standard American diet is loaded in sugar from all the soda and refined carbs like cookies, chips, breads, and donuts. This type of diet definitely tips the balance in favor of yeast. Once again, I want to emphasize that disruption in the bacterial microbiome in any part of your body is a prerequisite for fungal overgrowth. So your good bacteria can get wiped out by antibiotics. It can also be affected by certain medications like steroids or synthetic hormones like birth control pills. Do you have a sweet tooth that's out of control? Believe it or not, yeast overgrowth in your microbiome can actually hijack your cravings. They're desperate to survive, so they want you to eat more sugar. Remember how I said we're all eating fungus all the time? One of our biggest defense mechanisms against the overgrowth of yeast is the hydrochloric acid in our stomach. The problem is a lot of people are on acid suppressive medications called proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole. 
These medications shut down the production of stomach acid and can tip the balance of your microbiome in favor of yeast overgrowth. Do you suffer from persistent bloating, abdominal pain, inconsistent bowel habits, or nausea? Have you been told you have IBS? Well, it could be due to an overgrowth of fungus in your small intestine, called CIFO, also known as small intestine fungal overgrowth. CIFO was discovered by Dr. Satish Rao, a gastroenterologist at Augusta University. He published several articles on CIFO as a root cause of unexplained GI symptoms. How many of you have heard of SIBO, which stands for small intestine bacterial overgrowth? Normally, the small intestine does not have a lot of bacteria because its job is to absorb nutrients from your food. Most of the bacteria are located in the large intestine, or colon. If bacteria overpopulate the small intestine, this is called SIBO, and it can cause gas and bloating every time you eat. SIBO is a big root cause of IBS. If you'd like to learn more about SIBO, please check out my video which goes into great detail all about SIBO, which I'll link below. Now what's the difference between SIBO and CIFO? An overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine is SIBO, whereas an overgrowth of fungus in the small intestine is CIFO. A lot of patients actually have both conditions. The symptoms of CIFO are very similar to SIBO. They include bloating and abdominal pain, nausea, burping, acid reflux, constipation or diarrhea, fatigue, joint pain, brain fog, weight loss, and numerous food intolerances. Now let me give you a case example. Stephanie was a 35-year-old woman suffering with abdominal pain and bloating. Her gastroenterologist did an endoscopy and colonoscopy which were negative and she also had a negative abdominal ultrasound and CT scan. So Stephanie was told that she has IBS or irritable bowel syndrome and she just has to manage her symptoms. This was a frustrating diagnosis. When Stephanie came to see me, I thought for sure she had SIBO, but surprisingly, her SIBO breath test came back negative. Then we did a comprehensive stool analysis which showed an overabundance of Candida albicans. This meant that she had an overgrowth of the yeast Candida in her microbiome, and there were other clues to fungal overgrowth as well. On her skin, she had Tinea versicolor, which is a fungal infection that's causing these lightened, hypopigmented spots. She also mentioned that she suffered from frequent vaginal yeast infections. Putting all of these clues together, I diagnosed Stephanie with CIFO, and this was the true organic basis of her IBS symptoms as well as chronic bloating. So CIFO has to be diagnosed based on the clinical picture. Unlike SIBO, we can't use a breath test. The most accurate way to diagnose CIFO is to do an endoscopy and aspirate the duodenal juice and grow it in the laboratory. If there's over a thousandfold growth of candida or a fungus, then this is the official diagnosis of CIFO. Unfortunately, this technique is only done by Dr. Satish Rao at Augusta University. That's why, in most cases, CIFO has to be diagnosed based on the clinical picture. In a patient suffering from chronic bloating and IBS symptoms, if they have outward symptoms of yeast overgrowth and their gut microbiome test shows an overabundance of candida or other yeast, then we can make the diagnosis of CIFO. CIFO can also cause inflammation and leaky gut. The lining of our intestinal tract is only one cell layer thick, and the fungal overgrowth can lead to disruption in the tight junctions between the cells, leading to abnormal intestinal permeability, also known as leaky gut. Please check out my video on leaky gut to learn more about this condition, and I'll link it below. Now returning to Stephanie's case, why did she get CIFO? So I reviewed her diet carefully. For breakfast, she would have oatmeal with bananas. Her snacks were usually fig bars and grapes. She loved pasta for dinner with a glass of wine, followed by a little dessert. Clearly she had a sweet tooth, and remember, fungus and yeast thrive on sugar. On top of this, she had taken a few rounds of antibiotics for a few sinus infections she had in the last year. The good news is CIFO and Candida are treatable conditions. 
I put my patients on a paleo diet so that they're avoiding all the things that yeast love, like sugars, grains, dairy, and alcohol. I even have them avoid fruit for the first month, and then they can add in low glycemic index fruit like berries and apples. I encourage them to increase their intake of leafy green vegetables like arugula, chard, and kale because these kind of vegetables prevent the growth of yeast. Herbal antimicrobials are really effective at treating the overgrowth of yeast, and they actually work for both CFO and SIBO. I give my patients a broad-spectrum probiotic to help strengthen the bacterial microbiome against yeast. We can also fight yeast with yeast. This is a concept of using a good yeast probiotic called S. boulardii to push out other yeast from the body. Finally, we want to restore stomach acid and pancreatic enzymes because these are great defense mechanisms against yeast. Let's review the Candida CIFO diet once more. So you have to say goodbye to all refined sugar. Next, you have to cut out grains, which include bread, pasta, cereals, even rice, because these turn into sugar, which yeast love. Say goodbye to your nightly cocktail, because wine, beer, and hard liquor are all fuel for yeast to grow in the body. Dairy products have the milk sugar, lactose, so I also recommend avoiding all dairy products when treating candida and sifo. You also want to cut out all fruit, because fruits and fruit juices have the sugar called fructose. I recommend strict avoidance of fruit for the first month of treatment, and then you can add back low glycemic index fruit like berries and apples. So by now you're probably wondering, what can you eat? Well, here's a sample menu. You can have lean proteins like wild salmon and organic chicken with plenty of vegetables and leafy greens. So basically, it's a paleo diet and your beverage of choice should be water. You can add a little lemon to help alkalinize and detoxify your cells. Now let's talk about the herbs that we can use that have antifungal properties. Berberine comes from the root of the berberine plant. It's a powerful antifungal because it activates your insulin receptors, so it improves the way your body cells utilize sugar. Berberine has powerful anti-inflammatory properties, and the great thing is it works for both SIBO and CFO. Berberine does have some drug interactions with medications such as blood thinners, so it's good to check with your doctor. Next we have oregano oil, which comes from the Mediterranean herb. Capsules made from oregano oil get released in the small intestine, so it works great for both SIBO and CFO. We can also use allicidin. This has the potent antimicrobial compounds from garlic, and once again it can work for both SIBO and CFO. Candida's support combines many antifungal herbs into one product. It has berberine, oregano, ginger, sodium caprolate, and powdiarco. This combination of herbs is gentle and can be used to treat yeast and fungal issues in the body. The nice thing is it can also be used to prevent recurrent infections. One of the most fascinating concepts is that we can fight yeast with yeast. What this means is that we can use a good probiotic yeast to prevent the overgrowth of other bad yeast in the body. Saccharomyces boulardii, also known as S. boulardii, or Sac B, can be used for this very purpose. Research shows that S. boulardii has an inhibitory effect on the growth of candida, and it reduces biofilm formation. Not to mention, the literature also shows that it's excellent for helping with IBS symptoms. We also want to use a broad-spectrum probiotic to strengthen the bacterial microbiome against yeast. Remember, it's all about the balance between the bacteria and yeast in your microbiome. Probiotic 100 billion is a strong and effective probiotic. It has multiple strains of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium to protect this balance. Another key aspect of treating yeast and fungal issues is to restore your defense mechanisms which includes stomach acid and pancreatic enzymes. The first step is to get off medications which may be suppressing your stomach acid. For patients who are on proton pump inhibitor type medications like omeprazole, my first goal is to help them gradually wean off. I recommend digestive enzymes before each meal because this really improves the breakdown of food which can relieve abdominal bloating and discomfort. Betaine is a type of hydrochloric acid, and pepsin is the enzyme to break down proteins. 
So taking betaine and pepsin after the meals can further improve the breakdown of proteins and it can help to prevent a recurrence of yeast or fungus in the gut microbiome. If you take a betaine and pepsin after the meal and don't experience any burning, this is a sign that you need it, that you're probably not making enough stomach acid on your own. On the contrary, if you take the betaine and pepsin and notice burning, this is a sign that you don't need it, that you're already making enough stomach acid. And you can get rid of the burning by drinking a glass of water with a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. What are the side effects of the treatment? Every patient is different, but some people do experience die-off symptoms as we're killing off all the yeast and fungus in their body. They can get symptoms of nausea, fatigue, flu-like symptoms, changes in their bowel habits, and abdominal discomfort. The good news is these symptoms are usually temporary. They can last anywhere from a few days up to a full week, and then they start to resolve and the patient actually starts to feel better. Now returning to Stephanie's case, we treated her CFO for six weeks. This entailed changing her diet, taking the antifungal herbs, probiotics, and digestive enzymes. What's amazing is when she came to her follow-up appointment, she felt completely transformed. Her chronic abdominal pain and bloating were gone. Her bowels were now formed and regular. Her skin cleared up and her tinea versicolor was gone. She felt like a different person because her energy and mental sharpness were so improved. Here are the key points. Throughout our body, the bacterial microbiome helps to check and prevent fungal overgrowth. Yeast and fungus love sugar. Fungal infections on the skin are clues to fungal overgrowth in the gut microbiome. CFO is the fungal version of SIBO, but it can cause similar symptoms. We can treat candida and fungal overgrowth in the body by changing the diet and using herbal antifungal agents. The good probiotic yeast, S. boulardii, can be used to fight yeast with yeast. Finally, restoring your defense mechanisms, which include digestive enzymes and stomach acid, can make a huge impact in treating fungal overgrowth and preventing a recurrence. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave your questions and comments below. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.